We've reached a point in our current society where virtuous or heroic acts that are deemed to be worthy of praise are actually not virtuous or heroic at all. Not only that, but we've also gotten to a point where our understanding of what is worthy of approval and praise generally has also been degraded by the various social forces that conspire to weaken the human mind, whether that be social media, whether that be propagandists sitting up in their buildings working on how to sell you something, or more nefariously, on how to push a political agenda forth and by manipulating your mind, or whether it be scammers and con artists, or whether it simply be influencers, low-rate influencers who have nothing more to do or want nothing more to do than to than to game the human psychology for their own benefit. But I particularly want to focus on our understanding of, of virtue and heroism because there have been several incidences and several things that have happened in recent years that have made me as someone who has studied philosophy and who has studied the importance of good character, and really anyone with common sense knows what the importance of good character is. You have a good, better society if you have good character. Not only that, but if you have a better society, then you have better effects in the society. You have a lot. You have a lot more ability to pursue truth and understanding, which makes life all the more, all the more, better. There's been an attack on what is called virtue signaling, and most of you may I actually know what virtue signaling is. Virtue signaling is when someone in a performative fashion demonstrates how good and noble they are for popular approval. Now, I think the critique of virtue signaling, however, is a little bit misplaced, not because I, per I support performative performativity in terms of how we express ourselves, not because I support putting on a certain mask to make yourself more acceptable to a certain crowd of people. Conformity is the hobgoblin of little minds, as Emerson would say. But I think that in a healthy culture, to signal your virtue would be no problem if the culture actually knew what virtue meant. Because all virtue signaling is, is showing someone you're a good person. But if you can show someone through your actions, then there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But in a culture where your, where your understanding of virtue is corrupt, any signaling you do will not be towards the effect of being a good person. It'll be towards the effect of getting approval, which may mean you have to do things that are not actually indicative of you being a good person. And that is the core root of this issue. There's another problem with this false idea of virtue is that it impacts the social conception of what is moral and noble, which then also impacts how society will approach a particular topic or a particular issue. I have several examples of this to give all of you for your consideration. One of the more prominent examples, and perhaps one of the more visceral examples of the past few years of this kind of false conception of virtue, was the catchphrase, believe women. Now, this is sometimes translated as believe all women. That's not what was said by the feminists who were pushing forth this catchphrase, but that is what I was taken as by critics who decided that this catchphrase was too overly broad and it had a very weak burden of proof standard upon it. But the catchphrase of believe women, which basically related to how women come out and express their experiences with certain men, that we should give them the benefit of the doubt whenever a a accusation about sexual misconduct or whatever is made. The 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 the, the entire foundation of that claim was that women, according to what these people believed, were held down by the patriarchy historically. And therefore, to believe women is not simply to believe someone on the basis of their credibility. It is to remove every evidentiary standard, give someone the automatic benefit of the doubt in order to beat the patriarchy. So it is virtuous, according to that frame of thought, to disregard evidence, disregard reason, disregard sound thinking, to believe women. And so the good person and wanting to make sure that women are no longer oppressed under this frame of thought are then encouraged to in in engage in witch hunt irrational behavior so that they are assured in their soul that they're being a good person and they're doing something good. The false deception of virtue leads to the destruction of reason. Another example. The whole idea of America being a nation of immigrants. Now, 
When this phrase is invoked, it's oftentimes invoked in the context of criticizing any legal or social skepticism of letting in a bunch of people from other countries. And so the moment you endorse a kind of skepticism or a kind of a, a kind of conservatism toward the immigration system in the country, you are automatically considered to be against America because if it is a nation of immigrants, the logic then follows that if it's a nation of immigrants, you should support everything that has to do with maximizing immigration. Once again, this idea is built on the false conception of virtue. Because it is no vice for a country to wish to preserve its culture, preserve its norms, traditions, and values, and ensure that those who seek to come into the country endorse the same exact modes of thought that the majority in the country also happen to endorse. But the whole nation of immigrants term is used as a verbal sledgehammer to make that sensibility seem as if it is evil and if it is wrong. Another example would be X rights are human rights. So normally you hear this articulated as a trans rights are human rights. This would then make somebody within the social conversation who may be skeptical of certain forces within the conversation, particularly certain activist groups that wish to push certain agendas upon society, it would then make them seem as if they are a bad person towards individual trans people because they are skeptical of those agendas because they can be coded in the language of human rights. This is what is called issue linkage. Issue linkage is when you take two things that may be totally separate, but you bind them together through some kind of plausible mechanism, and you make them so inseparable that if you, if you that in, in this idea, if you oppose one thing, you oppose the other. A good example, if you oppose a welfare system that takes away individual responsibility and robust personal will from somebody, you must therefore oppose poor people. This is how this tormented thinking goes. It's issue linkage. And this is, again, leading into the false conception of virtue. I can keep going on and on and on. The idea of representation, that it is a necessity to have a black face or a Native American face on every single movie or TV screen, or else you are somehow perpetuating alienation. When in all reality, a lack of a negative is not a positive. Breaking it down in common terms, just because I do not give you something does not mean I am I am not taking something from you. Me withholding is not the same thing as me harming. But under this modern day moral paradigm of positive rights, if I don't give you something, I am somehow harming you and destroying your ability to live a good life. So therefore, representation is nothing more than an idea, a, rhetor a rhetorical construct that places no moral obligation upon a record producer or a movie producer or a creative or a writer to abide by. Because the consideration is not based on some abstract category, i.e. race or gender or whatever. It's based on what actually enhances the project I'm working on. Who is the best actor? Who's the best artist? Who is the best comic book writer? So on and so forth. Once again, all of these things become unassailable if you link them with virtue. Because people will be disarmed by their emotions and their desires to both conform and to be a good person as dictated by mass society. I think this has a lot to do as well with the rise of youth activism that we've seen in America. Many times, and especially when you look at many social causes like Black Lives Matter, or, or uh, the pa Palestinian movement, or what have you. You will have a lot of people in Gen Z, my generation, who will rant and rave and proclaim so sanctimoniously and so proudly that they are the ones standing on the right side of history, that they are the ones standing for the oppressed and the downtrodden, and that they have the moral authority to do whatever they must to ensure that those people are saved, even if it means violating the rights of others by destroying their property, by burning down their cities, by intimidating them, by using violence, and therefore causing the social order to decay, and therefore causing the linchpin of civilization, which is goodwill, which is sociability, which is a kind of order to also fall apart, therefore making society closer to the brink of collapse. But it's all justified in the name of moral grandeur. We have to really ask ourselves, my friends, 
Why are these false ideas so prominent? And I have an explanation. The explanation is is twofold. Number one, in a modern day society, when we think about politics or whatever, many of us don't have a strong conception of self. Many of us like to outsource our thinking and our beliefs to people who have status, who are more popular, and who have more reach in the culture than anyone else. And we won't base it on terms of what they say. We'll base it in terms of A, how they make us feel, and B, how compelling they seem by their reach. This is very interesting. I was talking to, my, to a friend, a friend of mine, a good friend of mine about this recently. There are people that have commented on my videos. Christian, didn't James Lindsay say this? Christian, didn't Ben Shapiro say this? What? You're looking at Christian Watson, aren't you? If you want to look at those two people, no shade to them, go look at them. Why would you come on my video and mention two people that have nothing to do with me or my style or my beliefs? Because you've outsourced your thinking to prominent people. And by doing that, you've degraded yourself by not thinking for yourself. It's not about Christian Watson. It's not about James Lindsay. It's not about Ben Shapiro. It is fundamentally about your ability to interact with information in the most best way possible that will give you an understanding of the topic and allow you to engage with the topic in a fruitful manner. But because we don't, This has the same effect of us outsourcing our values to the crowd, to the group, to the collective, and embracing slogans and catchphrases, as opposed to digging deep into the substance of the issues and understanding them for what they are. This leads to a false conception of virtue, which then signals false virtue. The second reason why I think we're in this problem is because so many people, and this kind of goes into what I said before, have status-bound thinking. Your thinking is bound up in status. Your thinking is bound up in what is socially acceptable. Your thinking is bound up in what this person says or that person says. Your thinking is bound up in what mass society says. So when you have someone who has a bad conception of self, and then someone who embraces status, which is also a binder on the minds of men that, that captures their thinking, you have a recipe for, 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 for them to go ahead and engage with the idea a false virtue, to be performative as opposed to being substantive, uh, to be uh, uh, righteous, self-righteous as opposed to being rational, and to embrace every single vice in the name of supposedly fighting for virtue. That's the problem we're facing right now in our modern society, my friends. It's impacting our politics. It's impacting our society. It's impacting how we think about politics. It's think about how we think about politics. It's impacting the conversation. It's impacting debate. It's impacting everything. And it all comes down to those two principles I've mentioned. The lack of self, the outsourcing of thinking, and also the status-bound thinking of many in society. Another example of this sort of lack of virtue comes from the, and I'll talk about this more colloquially here, the mental illness epidemic in our nation, but not the epidemic of people having mental illness, which is a different issue entirely, but but the epidemic of people wearing mental illness as a badge upon their breast and 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 going to the world on TikTok and other places and shouting to the heavens at their mental condition. This is something that happens. It happens quite often. There was this phenomenon on TikTok called undiagnosing, where people go on TikTok and they and they say to themselves, I have ADHD, but I don't, and it, I do have it. It's not bad. I have depression. And they use their problems as social currency by either trying to downplay them and make others feel as if they have problems, they have to just downplay them and not actually get them addressed, or by using it as a means of gaining themselves a status on the hierarchy of being alienated and oppressed in society and, and using their mental illness as a bludgeon. This is a phenomenon that has alarmed researchers. It's alarmed a lot of people. It's alarmed me, most certainly. And it's really made me think, if you have a, a, a core group of people, a demographic of young people between the ages of 15 and 25, which was a demographic, according to research, that that really dug into TikTok during the pandemic, when a lot of these mental health issues started, started to exacerbate, you have to really ask yourselves, what, where is their understanding of virtue? What is informing their understanding of what it means to be a good person? Is lying or not wanting to improve yourself characteristic of being a good person? Once again, 
we have lionized false virtue at the expense of sound thinking and at the expense of the perhaps collective sanity of all of us here living in society. The solution is simple, my friends. We must look for answers outside of ourselves and outside of those who are prominent or outside of political causes or temporal social issues. A political cause won't give you meaning in life. A social issue will not give you meaning in life. What gives you meaning in life are the friends you develop, the habits you undertake, and the enjoyments you have pursuing healthy things within the context of rigorous ethics and morality. When we realize that, and we practice that, I think that the core root of a lot of the issues we have in our society, our social discourse, and a lot of the principles that have invaded it, and a lot of the social programs, ideological programs that have also invaded it, those issues will resolve themselves because you will be dealing with people that have a healthier mindset about these issues. But so long as false virtue is the standard and sound thinking is the sort of dark sheep of the family, then I think we're going to continue to have problems of monumental proportions, and they will only get worse, because they only can get worse. But if we reverse the, this tide, they can only get better, because there's only improvement from this point, I would say. So when you look at someone who is out doing a protest, or who is out just reciting a slogan that they don't really understand, don't call them an idiot. Understand that their mind is saddled by a certain idea of what it means to be a good person, that is not informed. And then also understand that these ideas can take the form of a mass psychosis, which dupes a lot of different people into, in, into believing that if they do these things, they will also be a good person. The conscience, which is the moral faculty that, that, that informs us when we do right or wrong, which is one of the most important, I think, faculties of a human being. And reason is important, but conscience is also probably equally important. When you can weaponize someone's conscience against themselves, it's not them being the stupid person. It is the person weaponizing the conscience against them that is the evil person. And those people should be called out in our efforts to reclaim truth in that situation. My friends, like, share, comment, subscribe, do whatever you can to support me and get our message out there. If you want to donate to the channel, you can do that as well. It's all in the comment section down below. If you want to hear more political and social commentary for the philosophical lens, you can also, of course, subscribe to this channel and share the video. It helps. Every little bit helps. My friend, study history, study philosophy, remain more convicted, and please stay pensive. Bye, guys.